Hello, welcome down onto the tech desk. And in today's video, we're gonna be looking at a product I've been using for the past couple of weeks, and it's these two. So these are USB dongles. That means you can use pretty much most controllers with pretty much most uh, systems. But what we're gonna do in today's video is we're gonna be using the DualShock 4 as an example and be connecting it to the Nintendo Switch. But as you'll see, there's other controllers and other things. And these are both by Mayflash. And this one is the Magic S Pro 2, and this is the Magic NS2. And we're essentially gonna be talking about this one today because this one does everything this one does, but it does a bit more. Okay, so if what we do is, if I spin it over, you'll be able to see the difference here. So this is like the, the, the compatible systems. So they both do the Switch, great. Both do the PS3, both do Windows, and both do Raspberry Pi. But this one, the Pro, does the PS4 as well, and Mac OS. Okay, so if this is what you're looking to do, if you're looking to use another controller with Mac OS or a PS4, then you'll need to get the Pro, else this one will just do if you're gonna be going for the, um, the Nintendo Switch. And then also, if you ping it over, it also works for these as well, uh, the classic Neo Geo Mini. All the description below where you can see of everything that it works for, and all of the controllers as well. So what we're gonna do, put this one, to, like I say, we'll put this to one side, uh, it does everything this does. And if you wanna pick them up, this is around 25 quid. This one is a few pounds less, so not much more. So if you're in doubt, I would just get this one, because this pretty much does it a lot. In the box, when you open it up, you get yourself this. So you get yourself um, instruction manual, which has all all of like kind of like instructions on how to use it all the systems all the things you need and again I will list and what I'll do is I'll leave a picture of there of this and this so you can see I'll leave it on Ferris and I'll leave it down in the description below so you can have a look just to make sure you're getting the right one and then you also get the dongle itself which we'll talk about in a second and you also get this which is a USB A female to USB type C male and we'll talk about this later as well because I'm going to show you about it's connected to the switch light as well so before we get started connecting anything, I just wanna show you a few kind of like physical practical things. Okay, so this thing, it does wireless and it also does wired as well. So if you don't do wired, you just plug your cable into there uh, for, the, for the controller, fantastic. But if you want to do it wireless, which we're gonna be focusing on today, um, you're gonna to need to plug it into your dock or into the switch. Now, it does come with this. So what you can do is you can plug that in and then have this into the switch or the switch light, which I'll show you later, or you plug this. Now, if you've got an OLED dock, you will know that there's no USB at the back there. If you get a regular dock, you might be able to fit it in there. So this one needs to go kind of in here. Now, if you plug that in, all well and good, the LED is pointing towards you, which is a good thing. So when you turn it on, the LED is shining there. Uh, if you have a regular Joy-Con there, you can still see the LED. So that's not a problem, that's fantastic. But if you use anything else, if you use any sort of bigger Joy-Con like these Nixies, there's no way that's gonna work, okay? So you're gonna need a couple of things. You might need something extra. You'll need a USB extension. So when you've got that down, one that pokes out of there and then you plug this in, because that isn't gonna go in either of those slots if you've got this bigger Joy-Con in here. And there's a button on the top there that you can use. So practically speaking, it's okay. It would be better with the, uh, the, the other dock because you can poke it in the back there or get a cable to poke it in there so it comes out. Um, it's entirely to you, but with the OLED dock, it does need to come into the side there. Okay, so once you've got your um, switch set up, I've got my little cruise set up with my miniature monitor here uh, attached to this switch, um, and I've got my Joy-Cons attached over here. So once it's all up and it's all powered, um, because obviously this the dongle needs power, I'm gonna hold this up here, and you're gonna plug this into your switch. It doesn't matter which, which uh, USB, the bottom one or the top one. And um, once you plug it in, it will start flashing. Now we need that LED to be red because we're using it on the Nintendo Switch. And this is probably one of the only downsides of this thing. It's quite difficult to see what color that is, but if I have a look, it's, if, you, if you can see that, it's kind of like a, a reddy blue, which you think is purple, I'm not sure. All you're gonna do is there's a little button on the top there. If you hold that down, that changes color and then it, you match it to the console that you need in there. So if you were playing on the PS4, I think you'd change it to blue, but we're gonna be on the Nintendo Switch, which changes to make sure we go through all of the colors, changing it to red. So hold it down and then it'll change color. That's like a cyan, and what's that? It looks like a white maybe. Uh, that's yellow and that's possibly red. Okay, so we've got it on red there, so we know that's gonna be working for the Nintendo Switch. Then once that's in, all you're gonna do is you're gonna press that button once, and then once you click it once, it will start flashing really fast, and then that means it's in pairing mode. So now you need to get your controller, whichever your controller is, and set this one up into pairing mode. Uh, this is um, a DualShock 4, so I know the pairing mode is holding down share and the PlayStation button until that flashes fast. So let's hold them down. There we go, so we're in pairing mode there. And then you do, leave it next to there, and it automatically pairs to this. Then once after a few seconds, I mean that took about five, 10 seconds, if that, and then we're connected, okay? So there we go. 
Now, if you remove this and you kind of turn this off everything, if you plug this back in, it will remember this, this controller, okay? So you don't need to keep repairing it. But if you do another controller, it will forget this one and you'll just need to be pairing it. It always remembers the last controller that you paired it to. Okay, so here we go. Um, and I want to show you, it does have rumble and you can adjust the rumble, you can adjust the dead zones, all about that in the manual. And just to show you as well, uh, let's do this, make sure you're ready. Okay, so we have it on here. Uh, let's just show you that it's got the um, motion as well. Okay, just uh, and it has the rumble as well, as, we, as we've already talked about. So it has nice features. There doesn't seem to be any lag in it at all. It seems really good to use. So really pleased with this. So if you do have a different controller that you want to use with the Nintendo Switch or any of the other ones that we've talked about in here, um, this works really, really well. And you can also connect Bluetooth headphones as well. Um, it's not great with the Nintendo Switch because I think the lag is a little bit there. So you might as well just use the Bluetooth with there. But using Bluetooth headphones with the Nintendo Switch has never been great. So unfortunately, that's it. Right, next up, what we're gonna do is we're gonna ping this out, turn all this off, and then I'll get my Switch light. We're gonna be using this now. So we're gonna be connecting it to this. So all you're gonna do is you're gonna hold that in there and then plug that in, turn that on, make sure we're in, and then we'll turn this on. So it's flashing there, so that should be on. So let's turn the controller on, there we go. So I've swapped it to systems, but as I said, it remembers this one and there we go, it works. Okay, so it does work on the switch light if you want to with this um, adapter. And as I said before, this adapter will work on the switch handheld as well. You don't need to have it docked. Okay, and again, you just ping it out, get your, get your switch like that. It's turned off because obviously it turned off there. So just turn your controller back on. There we go, it's done. Done. As I said, this is only one example of one controller and on the Switch, loads of different controllers, loads of different things. Depends on which which is your favorite controller to use, or if you've got a DS4 that you use with your PS4, or you've got a spare one and you want to use it for your Switch. It's a cracking idea. Really simple to use, loads of different functions, relatively cheap, well worth a go and look out. I'll leave links down below where you can get hold of this. Um, I hope that's been of useful. As I said, I didn't go through this one because this is exactly the same as this one. This just does more controllers, um, more consoles. So if you want to have a look at it, save a little bit of money, you can go for this one. Or if you want to do this one for the more consoles. Okay, if you've got any questions, do let me know. Um, happily answer them for you if you've got any things about this. I hope I have gone through it um, it's sufficient enough for you. It's so blooming easy. It's kind of like just plug and play almost. And just make sure that you've got it all set up properly. No problems at all. All right, then, hope you liked it. Please do like, subscribe, and until the next video. Bye-bye.